in this episode, we're going to show you how to remove the saddle from your bicycle, uh, giving it a little bit more up close uh, view and also offering some tips and tricks that we use to, to make it easier for us to do. Uh, so we're going to bring you in closer now. So first thing I want you to see are the two, the the different tools that you can use. You can use a, a, a ratcheting wrench with a six millimeter Allen fitting on it. You can use a regular Allen uh, tool. The thing that you will notice right off the bat when you first put the tool on here. Actually, I'm going to remove the move the reflector out of the way for you. But the first thing you'll notice, or you might see these numbers on here, 22 newton meters. That tells you how tight. Um, that bolt is and that's pretty tight that's about 20 pounds uh, of pressure so a lot of riders you know they will try to remove the, that bolt by hand and it is on there pretty good I mean you can like I'm pushing on there and it's not going uh, so it's not a reflection of how strong you are 22 Newton meters is is a lot of force so the longer your tool the better the bigger the tool, the better. Um, this is probably as skinny as a tool as it gets, and it's kind of hard to, to grip. It's pretty short, so you don't have a lot of leverage. So if you have something like this at home, you can use this. It gives you a little bit more leverage. You can see I can bring it out more. If you don't have anything um, as big as this, and you're only stuck with one of these little Allen keys, even if it's something as small as like those Ikea Allen keys, you can grab something like a tube. I have an old seat post that I'm gonna use. And if you just slip this seat post on the end, you've now basically extended your grip into uh, however long your pole is. And this gives you a tremendous amount of, of leverage. And so this is a standard bolt. It turns right for tight and left for loose or counterclockwise for loose. And so one thing you'll notice too, I don't have the seat post and the saddle on the bike. I actually have it on the table because this will be easier for me to hold. And you're also using the saddle as um, uh, like a, a tripod, you know, making it more stable. And if you just simply push down, you saw it move already with very little force. And then I'm just gonna raise it up and then push down again very little force much so easy with that long pole uh once you've gotten it loose you should just be able to turn it by hand actually even that was tight so we're gonna use that leverage and loosen it like that and hopefully we've got a loose enough that we can do it by hand now yep yeah. and then we just turn it by hand until it becomes loose And you don't need to remove that plate. You'll notice I'm pushing down on that plate, keeping it in place, and the bolt is actually extending out. Once you've got a few turns, what you can do is you just push on that bolt up and you rotate that plate out of the way. And then you can slide that saddle out, put whatever new saddle that you want on there, working in the opposite direction. And then again, taking that plate, flipping it backwards, and then again, going the opposite direction, turning it right to tighten, making sure to hold that top plate in place. Don't worry about doing any kind of adjustments or anything like that. Right now, we just want to get it fixed so that it's not going to fall. The saddle's not going to fall out. So it's still relatively loose, but the saddle's insecure. It's in and secure now. And here's where you can do your minor adjustment for an aft position. You can do that um, angle adjustment. And then once you've got everything where you want it, you just finish tightening it down. Again, you turn it to the right to tighten. And then once you've got it, you know, hand tight, you get back to that bar or that or whatever you were using for leverage. Now what I'm gonna do also is I'm just gonna flip the saddle around since I'm tightening it now and I wanna use that leverage here. Get my breaker bar and then again, I'm just gonna use gravity, hold that saddle and then just push down to tighten, readjust it. If you have a torque wrench, definitely use a torque wrench, set it to the appropriate setting. But in this case, I'm going by 30 years of experience and feel. That's about 
Good right there. And then for the other type of saddle that we have, this is called a velo clamp. This one, you don't have to get down to 22 Newton meters, but you do have to make sure it is absolutely secure uh, because you can damage it if it's not secure. Keeping in mind that these saddles support your body weight, um, whether that's 100 pounds or 200 pounds or 300 pounds, um, and that is all centered right there. There's a little bit of weight supported by your feet and your hands, but most of that body weight is supported here, so you wanna make sure that you get these bolts uh, tightened as securely as you can. And I'm just gonna pull this apart and show you. The reason why you wanna make it tight and secure is there's a um, reading or knurling on the inside between these two plates. So I'm gonna pull this bolt out. one side just like that and then I'm just gonna flip this out and show you so you can see this texturing here and it's on this side here and that locks these two plates in place uh, and these adjust the angle of the saddle and what can happen is if you do not tighten this bolt down sufficiently the saddle can slip with that body weight on there and when it slips you've now ground down these um, teeth on here which help hold the saddle so now, no matter how much you retighten it, it's always gonna slip. You have to replace this because there's damage. So to prevent that damage, again, you just want to absolutely make sure that you have that bolt tightened down to its proper specification. And that is, in short, how you would tighten and loosen a saddle.